play it infinitely better than me. Well, Delmise does ha now have access to that new move in Poltergeist, which is a very strong physical ghost move, something that has been very lacking in previous formats and really can dish out a lot of damage here. It is paired with that Hatterene, and apparently we sometimes see that Hatterene does have access to that exclusive move in the Magic Powder that would turn a Pokemon into a Psychic type, and then that would turn all the Ghost moves that the Delmise would be throwing out into super effective damage. There is an Incineroar there that would be able to make use of that as well, and it was a very interesting item choice that we got to see on the Hatterene as well. Uh, so we'll have to see if that's going to come into play in this match. Yeah, that is that's quite nice, uh, not not letting people think about that in DD Hatterene. You always have to arrange your your team in a way that people don't think about certain combinations, but we're not going to be seeing that at all. It's actually going to be the Braviary and the Incineroar coming out alongside that Tyranitar and the Dustlop. So there's going to be an Intimidate going on, down onto that Tyranitar. They're going to be helping out the Braviary and the, uh, the Incineroar from those rock moves that could come out from the Tyranitar, but uh, a Trick Room is being threatened very heavily by this Dustlops. And I don't think there's any way to stop the Trick Room, really. It's not got anything immediate to pressure it. Um, Incineral might be able to, to try a little bit there. He obviously gets good information with the Frisk as well, and, and that's going to be interesting. But I don't really see a way to stop Trick Room going up. Uh, so Mateo may just have to play the duration of this game with, with that in play. And that's something that I don't think his team is poorly uh, established to do with, especially you know if you're playing in DD and Hatterene, you're ready for Trick Room, right? So. I don't know if Trick Room is going to be as premium as, as Carmine might have liked, but you know he's getting to decide when it goes up and, and what he has on the field when it does. So that's that's kind of important. Yeah, there's, there's multiple Pokemon that Mateo would want to be in the Trick Room environments, and Braviary isn't one of them, but the Incineroar could definitely just switch out straight into one of those Pokemon, but it's definitely not going to be a Trick Room coming out here. <laughs> no Trick Room this turn. It is a really good offensive issue here to be able to be pushed. The Helping Hand starts out with the Dust Cops, and not much damage in return from the Rock Slide of the Braviary, but he gets a flinch onto that Tyranitar, so that Helping Hand boost absolutely null and void. Incineroar follows up with a Parting Shot, Parting Shot making sure that attack stat is exceptionally low on this Tyranitar after the combination of Intimidate as well. So a lot of investment from Carmine to not play a certain way, uh, making sure he avoided the Trick Room, maybe trying to catch Mateo out with the obvious setup there. But because he's not going first, he does get flinched by the Rock Slide, and that's something that Braviary is going to be able to want to try and do over and over again. That parting shot allows the switch, though, to an Urshifu for Mateo. Yeah, and definitely going to be threatening down this to Renata now. Uh, and that was actually a way that Trick Room could have been stopped if that Dustlops did end up clicking it, but the Tyranitar was the one that was stopped moving by that flinch. If it was carrying one of those Focus Sashes that Tyranitar are often carrying now, uh, that has been broken and will be completely uh, exposed from this, this close combat that could go into uh, the Tyranitar. Dustlops could still be carrying the Ally Switch, though, which, so that is going to be an interesting mind game there, but the Tyranitar doesn't want to have any of that. Tyranitar forced to leave the field after an Intimidate and Parting Shot. It's, it's nigh on useless at that point. Uh, Dustlops staying on the field, though, so giving him an opportunity, and Mateo, realizing he's in a good position after turn one, decides to go with Dynamax nice and early on. Teams that want to put the pressure on and, and try and get knockouts early, usually Dynamax before their opponents who need a little more setup, and in this case, it's the Braviary getting the benefit of that. So still pretty much at full health, able to, to start applying a bunch of pressure now. That said, Urshifu is going to move first. Urshifu is going to land a Wicked Blow. The Duskops a premium target for that, being bought exceptionally low. And that guaranteed critical hit definitely amping up the damage. And Braviary, Max Airstream will follow up. We saw it in the menu targeting the Duskops, and that turn one turned into kind of an even worse turn two as the Duskops is knocked out. So Mateo taking the early Pokemon lead, getting the speed boost, and removing the Trick Room setter. Really good combination of, of buffs for him there. Yeah, one of the po bulkiest Pokemon that we know has been taken care of on Carmine's side, and he hasn't actually done any damage back to Mateo. It's just been some Sandstorm chip. He hasn't actually been able to attack thanks to that flinch from the Rock Slide. So a really good opening for Mateo here, being able to take out that Dusclops. Uh, because he's going for those Airstream boosts, he definitely doesn't want to be playing in that Trick Room environment. And now Carmine doesn't have the option to set it up. Uh, the Tokyo Sprint coming in here will be able to threaten down that Urshifu as is the single strike variety. And the Tranitor now coming back in, uh, got rid of those Intimidate drops and the Parting Shot as well. And 
Yeah, now he really needs to start threatening some damage. The Tokis will be able to threaten the Urshifu with a Dazzling Gleam, uh, but it would need to go for a Follow Me to keep the Tyranitar safe from any fighting-type moves. Uh, so it's going to be an awkward decision for Carmine here, whether he wants to go on the offensive with the Tokis to try and take out the Urshifu, or if he wants to keep that Tyranitar safe from any fighting moves so that it could launch off a big rock move into the Braviary. And maybe the Tyranitar wants to be going for the Dynamax here. If it just has access to that Rock Slide, it may not be doing enough damage to the Braviary, but then there's always the Incineroar waiting in the back for Mateo to just be able to intimidate that Tyranitar again. Well, Urshifu leaves the field. Does bring the Incineroar that you just mentioned, Jamie, saying, I need to get the Intimidate down on this Tyranitar. It's a really good way to answer it. Uh, particularly when Rock Slide is already a little underwhelming compared to some of the other attacks we see flying around in this format. Uh, the Dynamax, though, coming through from Carmine in this turn, realizing he's got two candidates that can actually Dynamax quite nicely there. So I think this is a good change up, and it's going to be his Toga Kiss. So maybe the Toga Kiss looking to do with that Urshifu that has previously left the field. I do like that. I think that's important for him to be able to start fighting back with some Dynamax and, and take some hits a little bit better, too. Hits like the Max Steel Spike from the Braviary. It's going straight towards that Toga Kiss and doing a good amount of damage. Of course, no same type of attack bonus, so not the most threatening but it gets a defense boost which is going to be key for dealing with this tyranitar in, in future turns especially after the intimidate drop togekiss starts to level up those speed buffs a little bit a max airstream uh, into the face of the incineral that just switched in so it would have been nice to land that on the Urshifu, but it wasn't to be and tyranitar's speed gets the boost so one airstream on either side really important here and tyranitar's rock slide exceptionally underwhelming the defense boosts and the drop from intimidate uh, making it pretty pretty poor if we're honest uh, the amount of damage you want to see against two super effective hits yeah really not much damage coming out at all from the Tranta and Toad Kiss almost certainly going to be the better candidate for the Dynamax here able to shrug off that steel spike quite effectively and now depending on the, how the Tokis and the Braviary have been trained there's only been one airstream boost for the Braviary as so the Tokis could be moving first being able to fire off another another max move to get another airstream boost maybe putting the Tyranitar faster than the Braviary to get another rock slide off uh, but yeah the, the, the Tokis should be able to shrug off another steel spike it didn't do over half damage to the Tokikis and an airstream would do a slightly less damage so this Tokikis is still looking in quite a nice position but it does need to still be saved to be able to take out that Urshifu. Uh, the Tyranitar really it doesn't do a good job of taking that out, and that looks like why the Tokus wants to go on the defensive here. Togekiss plays it safe with the Max Guard, not taking any damage from that Braviary in this turn. Tyranitar, though, uses Superpower. Superpower will connect onto the Incineroar, but the Intimidate Drop Defense Boost combination just too much for that Tyranitar to, to really do anything. It's a t falls another stage as Flare Blitz for Incineroar also targets down that Togekiss and it's Max Guard. No damage there. So Carmine, the only one getting damage down, but still not picking up any knockouts. I think what's important for him here is he manages to make it through the last turn of this Braviary's Dynamax. And now he's got one more turn where he's the only one with the Dynamax on the field. So he needs to take advantage of it. Maybe set up that uncontested airstream in this turn and set himself up well for later. The problem is he's going to be boosting up speed on this pretty weak Tyranitar at this point. Yeah, weakening itself even further with the superpower, so it's going to do even less damage with the Rock Slide. Incineroar still probably going to be in range, but saw how much damage it did previously to the Braviary. Uh, would easily be able to shrug off another one of those Rock Slides. Uh, probably still going to be moving first with the Braviary, uh, usually faster than a, a Togekiss, uh, it, unless the Togekiss is trained completely in speed as well and still can threaten down the Tyranitar with a, a close combat. Another coverage move that we've seen on this Bravery. We've seen a lot of coverage on, on this Braviary. When you run it with the uh, with the Assault Vest, you basically get four coverage moves as well, I and mean, you're able to do so much with it. Uh, the final max move is going to be Max Starfall from the Tokyo. So picking up a knockout there on Incineroar, uh, pretty handy, making sure that it can't follow up with any damage after the fact. Uh, does set up the Misty Terrain. I don't know if that'll be relevant, but just something good to note with that move and uh tyranitar does get to target the braviary only with the rock slide so not getting that kind of reduced damage from it being spread but the, just the combination of intimidate superpowers defense buffs really underwhelming damage once again from this tyranitar's rock slide yeah, an interesting choice uh, to opt for the Starfall instead of the Airstream. That could have put the Togekiss faster than this Braviary, uh, but only going for, for one Airstream boost so far. 
means that the Braviary would be able to fire up another attack before this Togekiss was able to attack. Would be quite close to being in range of another Brave Bird, and that would be able to stop the Togekiss from being able to take out this Urshifu, which is, again, threatening down this Tyranitar very, very heavily. Uh, so maybe a missed opportunity there. If he would have gone for another Max Airstream with the Togekiss, it would have been able to attack the Braviary first and uh, be, be, or be, even be able to go for a Starfall into the Urshifu before the Braviary was able to fire off another one of those Brave Birds. So it is looking like quite a nice position for Mateo. But we still haven't seen the last Pokemon in the back for Carmine. And it still definitely needs to be a Pokemon that can take care of this Urshifu, because now the Togekiss didn't get that extra speed boost. This Braviary is very likely to just be able to take care of it. And then, then Carmine would have to rely on that final Pokemon in the back to be able to take care of an Urshifu, because to uh, Tyranitar really won't be able to. Well, you said you hadn't seen the last Pokemon. You're now going to be given that opportunity, Jamie. Torkoal switches in for the Togekiss. The Togekiss that was alarmingly low. Uh, didn't want to get caught by anything nasty. And that Torkoal really wishes that Trick Room had gone up in turn number one, as it, it takes a Brave Bird for its troubles on the way in. Doing a good amount of health. Braviary not knocked out by the recoil, though. Maybe something Carmine was fishing for. That said, it doesn't matter so much. The rock side will get the damage down there to complete the knockout on Braviary and do a little bit of damage to this Urshifu. Urshifu doesn't flinch, is able to close combat. Mr. Antar is going to be easily picked off by that Urshifu's a big damage. The defenses drop, and that means that those defense drops are going to be kind of in play for the rest of the game. But it's still pretty healthy overall, and uh, you know, this indeed is going to make things a little bit interesting, I think, towards the end. The you know, Tokus also sacrificed its speed boost as well, so Urshifu would be able to fire off an attack before the Tokus was able to fire off a dozen Gleam, bypassing the Follow Me that could come out from the Indeedee as well. And that's going to be very close if that's going to be in range of a Wicked Blow. Uh, depending on how the Togekiss is trained as well, because you'll always get that critical hit with the Wicked Blow, uh, being able to bypass, uh, increase the damage a little bit more, even though it wouldn't be very effective against the Togekiss. Uh, so it's going to be very close if that Togekiss is able to survive any attack that the Urshifu would want to go for and fire off a dozen Gleam. Uh, but at the same time, he doesn't have the, the best way through this Indeedee. It's going to be able to fire off an Expanding Force uh, into the Togekiss and the Torkoal. Togekiss probably in range of that expanding force as well, and Torkoal not being the most specially defensive Pokemon could be taken down by it as well. We've talked about it before, Torkoal not the best on its special defense. The protects on both the Urshifu and the Togekiss. Indeed, he does expanding force. It is in the psychic terrain, so it's going to be uh, spreading out to both of them there as well. Uh, landing on the Torkoal, not enough for the knockout. But Torkoal with the overheat into the protecting Urshifu, that's not what you wanted to see on that turn. No, not at all. Uh, really needs to take out the, the Indeedee there, uh, because the Urshifu did go for that Protect. It would have been able to hit the Togekiss through that Protect with its Unseen Fist ability, uh, but now it's going to be just firing off this Wicked Blow. And perhaps see, it, does, it was enough to take out the Togekiss with that critical hit. Yep, Wicked Blow, really good move. Uh, for doing a little bit more damage than you think because of that guarantee critical hit. Of course, indeed, he able to wrap this game up with the expanding force. The Torkoal really struggling without access to that trick room. So, really good game. I think Carmine uh, tried to fight back after a, a pretty disastrous opening few turns from him. Uh, did open up a number of opportunities. You know, turns one and two didn't go his way, uh, but Mateo really showing mastery of, of how his team works and, um, you know, knowing, I think, a little bit of how his, his opponent wanted to play. Certainly, gives him a, a slight upper hand, but he just played it so well throughout. Yeah, it was an interesting choice not to click the Trick Room with the Dusclops uh, turn one. Only something like a Taunt really would have been able to, to guarantee stopping that Dusclops from going for the Trick Room. And he brought the Torkoal in the back, which really wants to be moving first in that Trick Room environment. But maybe scared off by the, the Pokemon that also want to be in the Trick Room for Mateo's side, that Delmise and the Hatterene as well, but the Torkoal would be underspeeding both of them if it is trained as slowly as possible. Uh, so may maybe that is what Carmine would want to go for. He did have to opt for a bit of a faster mode with his Togekiss going for those Airstreams, uh, but it really wasn't doing enough. And he only opted for one Airstream. If he'd have been able to go for two of those Airstreams instead of that final Starfall, he would have been able to threaten a, a Dazzle Gleam before the Braviary would be able to go for a Brave Bird. And that could have been the slight bit of position that Carmine would have be uh, needed to be able to take the game. Uh, but at the same time, he could have just clicked that Trick Room turn one and got that Torkoal into the Trick Room. And I think that's the, the crux of this game, right? It's turns one and two, the helping hand into the flinch is bad, and, and then not getting Trick Room turn two is, is arguably worse as well. So 
Carmine's gonna have to look at that strategy, maybe try and execute a little bit differently, and hope that he can he can push it all the way through. And, and once you get the trick room up, he's got to take advantage of it too. He's got to land those huge hits, those really big attacks from, from Torkoal. But once you saw the Torkoal coming forth, you just thought this is not a good place or a good time for it at all. Uh, particularly after he'd sacrificed some of the boosts he, he picked up as well. I, I do say though, Mateo played it so well. I think he, he brought a really good team to deal with it and, and answer that lead, the combination of, of Braviary and, uh, you know, anything really with the Braviary was, was just quite a lot to handle. I think Braviary's boosts uh, made the Tyranitar near useless as well. So maybe something Carmen has to look at is not playing with that Tyranitar uh, because it, it was... I was definitely disappointed in, in how much it did, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah, the super effective rock slide hitting a Braviary and an Incineroar and doing maybe 20% is is not what you want to be seeing from uh, what should be quite a heavy hitter, but it's going to be brought for Carmine once again paired with that Dust Box. And now we're going to be seeing the Indeedy Hatterene. So will Carmine have, have ignored this team preview and, and been, been faked out by having the Indeedy and the Hatterene on, on the top and the bottom of the team preview? Well, we also saw the... Uh item on the Hatterene, so it really is a case of Trick Room if you dare, if you're the Dusclops, right? I mean, uh, it's nice that he's got the Dark type in against both of these Psychic types, and, and that's <clears throat> probably something he was looking for, I think, in, in game number one, with this lead, was, oh, he's gonna show me indeed he Hatterene, and, and I'm gonna be able to to kind of play around that, so... It looks like Mateo's adjusting his strategy, trying to read in uh, to what they're doing, um, but I think this this Tyranitar Dusclops lead a lot stronger in this matchup. Yeah, and now Carmine knows about the room service as well because of that frisk on the Dusclops, so uh, really doesn't want to be clicking that trick room, but then that would have pr probably allowed the Hatterene to underspeed even the Torkoal in the trick room, so it's going to be some interesting interactions whether both players want to go for that trick room, but Hatterene won't be saying trick room this turn, it will be switching out for that Incineroar to get one of those Intimidates onto that Tyranitar. Yeah, this Tyranitar has been victim to being scared off by this Incineroar every single turn, it seems. As soon as the Incineroar is able to switch in, it just turns up. Anyway, Dusclops though opens up with exactly what it did in game number one, as you mentioned. So scared of activating that rune server, something I don't think has seen its maximum potential yet. Does fire yeah. Rock Slide off, does do about half damage to both Pokemon though. <clears throat> and the Mystic Fire into the Tyranitar, maybe trying to call something. Uh, a little bit differently uh, as the special attack drops uh, you know it just gets a little bit of damage down so maybe just trying to break the focus sash uh, something we've talked about on tyranitar before uh, the sandstream comes around and, and everyone's taking a little bit of damage as well so focus sash is probably not the premium item in this one no, and a bit more respectable damage coming out from the Tyranitar now. The Incinera was brought down below half with that Sandstorm chip as well. Would be very close to being in range of another Rock Slide uh, with a Helping Hand boost as well, but we're not going to see a Rock Slide, it's just going to be... Uh, the Trans is just going to be protecting itself. Yep, Tyranitar playing it safe, uh, avoiding the expand... Well, we wouldn't worry about that anyway. Uh, we just get the animation for the... Uh... Protected. That's kind of strange. Uh, but anyway, the parting shot is actually what it avoids even more importantly. That's really, really key. And this Duskops still scared to trigger him, just nightshading in this turn. Yeah, going to be putting that Incineroar into, into berry range, so going to be able to heal off. And maybe w with the Sandstorm chip, probably about the same range that it would have been uh, in the previous turn. Maybe Carmine just wanted that extra bit of chip onto the Incineroar to allow the Helping Hand Rock Slide to definitely pick up a KO. But it looks like the Incineroar is just slightly healthier at the end of this turn than the previous turn. Uh, so maybe a Helping Hand Rock Slide won't be able to take out this Incineroar anymore, but Carmine's going to be going for it anyway. Yeah, that's probably uh, one of the better options he's got here is, is hopefully they'll, they'll all go through. He doesn't decide to rock side though, he does lash out instead. Just trying to deal with this annoying Indeedee. Uh, so we saw the berry activate on Indeedee, trying to take that hit a little bit better, and that is important. It does manage to, to get that uh, hit taken. Indeedee though, we will fire back with the expanding force. It obviously doesn't affect Tyranitar, affects the dark typing. A little bit more damage down on Dusclops, another uh, small little bit, but it all adds up. Dusclops is one of those Pokemon you have to deal with little by little, I think. The parting shot will connect in this turn, and Tyranitar, uh, I've got a feeling it's going to be back to that awful situation where it's, it's just underwhelming uh, with its damage. Now it's got two drops uh, on its attack. It actually has two drops on its special attack, but that's not so important. It was an interesting choice going for the Lash Out. He did frisk for Colberberry, so uh, you could have expected that Indeedee to be able to survive. And 
could have been very close on taking the knockout with the helping hand rock slide instead. Uh, but now he's allowed that Incineroar to get that passing shot off, make that Tyranitar once again very, very underwhelming, preserving the Intimidate in the back as well if he wants to bring that in. Uh, but the Indeedee has been put very low. It will be in range of, of any attack that the, the Tyranitar would want to go for, even with all of those attack drops on it. But yeah, but we're back in the position where both the Hatterene and the Duskops could be setting Trick Room. But Hatterene could easily go on the offensive as well. The Duskops has been very, very heavily chipped. And in the Psychic Terrain, it could be very close if an Expanding Force would be able to take it out. Well, you mentioned that it was going to be very easy to knock out that Indeedee, and it's leaving the field. Uh, the Incimidate from Incineroar, making sure Tyranitar is, is struggling to deal damage once again. Tyranitar does Rock Slide immediately on this turn, so uh, good damage. No, uh, that's just going to be uh, <laughs> underwhelming without the helping hand. Dusclops, still scared of the Trick Room, does Nightshade. That's, that's better damage than the, the Tyranitar did, but... Hatterene is going to set the Trick Room itself. He says, if Dusclops isn't going to do it, I'm going to do it for myself. I'm going to activate my own room service. So it's speed drops, and now it's definitely going first in that Trick Room. There's not much that can deal with, with a Pokemon after room service, an already slow Pokemon after room service in a Trick Room. Even the Talk Hole in the back for Carmine should be moving second in the Trick Room now with that room service uh, on the Hatterene. The Dusclops took that tiny bit extra chip from the Sandstorm as well, so it would be even closer to being in range on an attack that Mateo would want to go for. Whether that's a dark move coming out from the Incineroar would almost certainly take out the Dusclops from this range. The Sandstorm is still up, so the Tyranitar would be able to shrug off those fairy moves coming out from the Hatterene a little bit better, uh, but still really not threatening too much damage here. Um, does want to get that Torque Hole into the Trick Room now, but uh, yeah, the Trance is going to be protecting itself. Keeping itself safe from absolutely anything. Doesn't need to worry about the Expanding Force, it doesn't hit it anyway, but we get the animation. As Expanding Force lands on the Dusclops, it is in the, the correct terrain to do enough damage to get the knockout, so Dusclops isn't even able to try and reset the Trick Room. Incineroar's parting shot once again will land into the Protector Tyranitar, but the Sandstorm goes away. Uh, that's going to help out a little bit when it comes to maybe landing those fairy type moves you mentioned before. Um, but there's the psychic terrain gone as well. So a lot of things that were set up on turn one are finally leaving the field. But most importantly, Mateo did switch out that NDD earlier. So he's able to reset that easier. Yeah, so if, if Carmine brings in that Torkoal to try and threaten under Trick Room, uh, the indeed he could just be switched in for that Incineroar, reset that Psychic Terrain, and then the Hatterene would still be able to do a huge amount of damage, even to this Togekiss, and the Hatterene is definitely going to be underspeeding that. And we still haven't seen uh, Dynamax come out from either player here. Uh, maybe preserve, want to preserve the, the Pokemon in the back for Mateo, because uh, he has got taken a lot of damage on the Incineroar and the Hatterene. Uh, but still reasonably healthy for Carmine. He has, he has uh, lost the Duskops once again, but still has some very healthy Pokemon. Very weak to Ranitas still, though. That, that really does want to be sw switching out. Resetting all those drops would be able to reset the Sandstorm to get that special defense boost to, to be able to fight against that. Hattering a little bit better as well. Uh, but the Togekiss here, it still could be very much open to an Indeedee switch in to reset that Psychic Terrain, get that Expanding Force power up, or just a, a, taking a huge hit from the Dynamax. But there's no Indeedee switch in. Nope, Indeedee's uh, just going to stay in the back on this turn as the Dynamax comes through for Hatterene. Uh, so that's going to be just trying to deal as much damage as it can in the next few turns. Maybe trying to take advantage of a turn without the Sandstorm up to help out that Tyranitar, really uh, kind of push the needle in that regard. That said, Carmine's also realized now is the turn to Dynamax and, and try and switch this game around. So uh, a lot of things going on and, and maybe this game able to turn around very, very quickly. The Togekiss Dynamax thing I think is, is pretty important there. Uh, it's one of the better Pokemon for, for taking big hits, and you don't want Dynamax to run tough when its stats are already incredulously low. So some really good options here. Of course, Indeedee just gets to G-Max Smite. This could be a huge issue. Uh, I mean, not damage-wise, but just the, the secondary effect of G-Max Smite is so, so annoying, and this could really uh, throw a, a spanner in the works for Carmine as both of his Pokemon are confused. Incineroar follows up with a Flare Blitz, brings Togekiss down to below half. Incineroar taking a little bit from Recoil there, but we'll see importantly what Tyranitar does. Tyranitar does lash out, doesn't get caught with a special, uh, any kind of drop actually, so lash out not doing the maximum amount of damage it would want to. And Togekiss also attacks through its confusion, no concern there, but just decides to follow up on this Incineroar 
uh, and that's going to be a, a max starfall getting a knockout setting the misty terrain uh, but importantly Carmine has to be worried of these confusions in the next couple turns and he has set the Misty Terrain, so uh, any Pokemon paired next to the Tokus won't be able to be confused by that smite anymore. But Delmize is the, the Pokemon of choice for Mateo, so really going to be threatening a huge amount of damage uh, in this Trick Room environment. Against that Tyranitar, it would easily be able to pick up a knockout as well. And it does have that Steel Worker ability that really increases the power of its Steel Time moves, which would really threaten down this Togekiss as well. And you just saw how much damage that Tyranitar did to the Hattering. It was really negligible and and he need, Carmine needs to switch out that Tyranitar if he wants to make use of it as well and really Mateo can just ignore it if he wants to the Togekiss at the moment is the Dynamax Pokemon it is the threat and Tyranitar really isn't threatening too much so uh, the Delmize and the Hattering could be attacking into this Togekiss Delmize itself might even be able to take out the Togekiss just oh, with one no. steel move well, you mentioned the Tyranitar had to leave the field, and it has on this turn. Torkoal coming in on its place, a Pokemon that loves the Trick Room, getting control of the weather with Drought. No shock there at all. But this could be a really bad turn for Torkoal as it comes in in place of Max Mindstorm. That's a huge call from Mateo there to say, I think it's going to be anything but the Tyranitar, which would will not be hit by the Mindstorm. That said, the battlefield gets weird. The Torkoal takes it, but is very, very low. And as you mentioned, that steel worker ability and anchor shot just means that the the tokus isn't going to even be afforded the chance to to try and fire back or set up anything so as delmise reveals the life form does take a lot of damage but most importantly for mateo here that call the tyranitar leaving the field the max mindstorm doing so much damage to this torkoal is absolutely key and even worse the torkoal's just lost its son because tyranitar came in so mateo absolutely in the driving seat right now yeah that was a, a fantastic play coming up from mateo uh, if the tyranitar would have stayed in the mindstorm wouldn't have done any damage but then tyranitar wouldn't have been doing really any damage back uh, to mateo's side instead so really nice coverage there uh, either having to say that you're not doing any damage or you, or you're going to take a huge amount with your talk yep well there's the <clears throat> protect on Tarantar, still a little bit scared. Hatterene though, G-Max Smite on this turn, landing onto the Torkoal, doing enough to pick up that final sliver of health. Uh, and that really kind of seals the game. There's no ability seeing that room service Hatterene does move before Torkoal and Trick Room. That confirmation for anyone wondering about it just means that this Delmize is going to be able to deal comfortably with this Tyranitar. At least the Tyranitar isn't super low anymore on its stats. It's got its attack back and, and can actually try and fire back, especially now this Trick Room's ended. But I just think it's going to be too little too late as it has to face down a Hatterene and a Delmize right now. That anchor shot with the Steelworker ability, so, so powerful. And, and Hatterene, you know, yeah, it, it could get knocked out now. There's no it drops the attack, but uh, you've still got to deal with Delmize. Latranta well, has lost the, the attack drops that it, it suffered, so we'll be doing a reasonable amount of damage once again. And it, now that the Trick Room is over, the Tranta will be able to move first and probably has to be relying on those Rock Slides now. We saw the Rock Slide come, flinch come out from Mateo from that Braviary, uh, but Tyranitar itself has to just hit through with confusion, but doesn't offer the Rock Slide, just going for that Lash Out instead to try and take out that Delmise. Yeah, Lash Out won't get the knockout, no drops on this turn, meaning it's just not enough. Uh, so close, I think if that gets knocked out, this game changed a lot, but Anchor Shot and Steel Worker, fantastic animation, I haven't seen that one before. Uh, just able to pick up the knockout there, and Mateo, uh, even though he loses Delmise for his troubles, wraps up this set 2-0, so well played throughout the whole set. Carmen's adaptation is so good, but Mateo comfortably in the driving seat throughout.